welcome to another lecture in dairy technology as you remember earlier i had a lecture on spoilage of milk and that lecture became extremely popular and most of the people requested for the spoilage of milk products so today i am going to discuss about the spoilage of milk products especially more about the spoilage of butter cheese and little bit about the fermented dairy products and other milk like special type of milk condensed milk and evaporated milk little bit about UHT milk but before that briefly I will discuss little bit about the cause and process of spoilage in the earlier lecture when I discussed about the spoilage of milk, I have discussed the details background about the process and mechanism and cause of spoilage. So here briefly I want to repeat those things. So mainly the food spoilage occurs due to the microorganism and to some extent due to the enzymes, other enzymes or inherent endogenous enzymes in the food and thirdly due to oxidation so natural oxidation or sometime we call auto oxidation and another common reason is the effect of light or light exposure that can cause discoloration or also oxidation as i have already mentioned the spoilage the main reason is microbes so that's why whenever we talk about the spoilage of food the microbial spoilage is the most important aspect in milk and milk products some of the common undesirable microorganisms here we can see like streptococcus lactis acromobacter bacillus subtilis and coliform group of bacteria and many other slowly we are going to see in specific organisms involved in the spoilage of different dairy products now little bit briefly we will see the background reaction in the spoilage one of the most common is proteolysis so this proteolysis happens due to the enzymes coming from the microbial growth and this proteolysis comes by the hydrolysis of protein so hydrolysis of milk proteins by microorganisms usually is accompanied by the production of bitter flavor caused by some of the peptides released so due to the proteolysis there will be formation of smaller peptides that can cause bitter flavor in different dairy products proteolysis is favored by storage at low temperature destruction of lactics that is lactic group of organisms and other acid forming formers by the heat destruction or utilization of formed acid by molds and yeasts and neutralization of acid by products of other organisms so many organism can cause neutralization and that can favor the proteolysis here we will see the another chemical changes happens in dairy products so as we know dairy product has got high amount of fat many products are fat rich dairy products so there the changes happens in the fat and the most common is oxidation of the unsaturated fatty acids sometime there will be hydrolysis of the fat that is most of the time the milk fat is present as triglycerides there is with one glycerol molecule three molecule of fatty acids will be bound in ester link so due to the microbial growth and the specific enzymes it can break the ester linkage and produce free fatty acids so sometime there can be combined oxidation and hydrolysis and together it can produce rancidity when the oxidation or hydrolysis is too much the product will have specific off order and then we call it rancidity in the diagram we can see the triglycerides it can undergo oxidation or hydrolysis and leading to the spoilage as i mentioned mostly in milk fat they are in triglycerides and they are broken and produces free fatty acid now specifically we will discuss about the spoilage of butter butter contains around 15 percent water and 81 percent fat and generally less than 0.5 percent carbohydrate and protein although it is not highly perishable product it does undergo spoilage by bacteria and molds bacteria cause two principal types of spoilage in butter 
one is surface stain another is rancidity so butter is a fat rich dairy product more than 80 percent fat so protein is very minimum so main spoilage happens to the fat and that may be due to microbial growth which can cause hydrolysis or sometimes oxidation due to uh, in, uh, sunlight effect or sometimes salted butter salt act as a pro-oxidant and also due to bacteria or mold so in the picture we can see the growth of mold on the surface and color changes and sometimes there can be hydrolysis also now specifically we will discuss about the surface tint in butter surface tint or putridity is caused by pseudomonas putrefaciens as a result of its growth on the surface of finished butter it develops at a temperature range of 4 to 7 degrees celsius within 7 to 10 days of storage so by any chance if this organism escapes the process of heating and other thing then it can grow even at a lower temperature pseudomonas can grow at a refrigeration temperature and it can cause tint on the surface the order of this condition is apparently due to certain organic acids especially isovaleric acid so it produces a typical order and that is due to the compound formed with the growth of this organism called isovaleric acid now we will discuss about rancidity that is in butter this condition is caused by the hydrolysis of butter fat with liberation of glycerol and free fatty acid which i have already told in the beginning this effect may also be caused by lipase from other sources other than the microorganisms and main causative organism is pseudomonas fragi and sometimes pseudomonas fluorescens so these pseudomonas organisms can grow at a lower temperature in refrigerator and they will produce large amount of fat splitting enzyme or lipolytic enzyme so they are called as lipase uh, uh, type of bacteria and causing the rancidity in butter fat here we will see some other kind of spoilage in butter but mainly here we can see color and flavor changes so regarding the flavors fully we have discussed in details about the flavor defect in butter mainly caused by different kind of organisms here only one or two i am going to repeat which are common that is multi flavor multi flavor that is due to streptococcus lactis var multigenis sometime there will be skunk like odor caused by pseudomonas mephetica and sometime there will be black discoloration due to pseudomonas nigri faciens so this nigri faciens wherever it is it will produce black color these are the common order flavor and color changes and other details about the flavor defect in butter we have discussed in separate lecture earlier that is the defects in the different dairy products here we will see the fungal spoilage of butter butter also undergoes fungal spoilage commonly by species of the following genera that is cladosporium alternaria aspergillus mucor rhizopus penicillium and geotricum these organisms can be seen growing on the surface of butter and produce color essence to their spore colors black yeasts of the genus torula have been reported to cause discolorations on butter so these are some of the common spoilage caused by fungus in butter now we will discuss about the spoilage of cheese and the first is about the cottage cheese so this cottage cheese undergoes spoilage by bacteria yeasts and molds the most common spoilage pattern caused by bacteria is a condition known as slimy cart. The most common causative organism is alkaligenes and followed by pseudomonas, proteus, enterobacter and acinetobacter species. And sometimes there can be fungal spoilage such as stale, musty, moldy and yeasty odors mainly caused by penicillium, mucor, alternaria and geotricum so this is briefly about the spoilage of cottage cheese now we will discuss about the spoilage of ripened cheese the low moisture content of ripened cheese makes them less susceptible to spoilage by most organisms 
So due to the less moisture content, many bacteria and all cannot grow and cause spoilage in ripened cheese. However, some of the molds can grow. Further, some ripened cheeses have sufficiently low oxidation reduction potential. That means it is near the anaerobic condition. So many anaerobic bacteria can grow and cause spoilage in ripened cheese, especially of the Clostridium group. And some of the species are Clostridium pasturianum, Clostridium butyricum, and Clostridium sporogenes. So they have been reported to cause gassiness of ripened cheese. In continuation about the spoilage of ripened cheese, one anaerobic spore former that is Bacillus polymixa has been reported to cause gassiness. So this is a bacteria and spore forming bacteria. All these organisms utilize lactic acid with the production of carbon dioxide which is responsible for the gassy condition of this butter. Now we will discuss about the spoilage of evaporated milk. We have discussed earlier there the major part of the moisture is removed and milk is concentrated and they are not added with sugar. When it is added sugar then it is called sweetened condensed milk. So here unsweetened evaporated milk generally is canned and heat processed so that is a sterilization to destroy all microorganisms present. So once it is sterilized and canned, it can stay for long time. Now spoilage can occur only when the heat process is inadequate or defects in the can permit the entrance of organism. So if the sterilization is insufficient or improper or sometime there may be some passage through which organism can enter into the can, then only there can be spoilage early. So bacterial spores that survive the heat process may cause this kind of spoilage, particularly swelling of the can. Three type of spoilage can happen here. One is swelling of the can. There will be gas forming anaerobic clostridium species that is responsible for this. Second category is coagulation of milk that is by bacillus species, bacillus cereus or bacillus subtilis. They are all mesophilic bacteria and bacillus coagulans that is obligatory thermophiles. And the third kind of spoilage which can happen that is bitterness that is due to proteolysis as I have mentioned at the beginning and it is caused by bacillus species. Now we will see about the spoilage of sweetened condensed milk. The first thing which can happen here is the gas formation by yeasts such as Torula lactis and Torula globula and rarely by coliform bacteria. Another kind of changes which can happen in sweetened condensed milk is thickening caused by micrococci probably due to production of renin-like enzymes. So we have already seen earlier renin-like enzymes can cause thickening or ropiness and then buttons. These are mold colonies growing on the milk surface. The size of these buttons is determined by the amount of air in the can. The common species responsible for this is Aspergillus and Penicillium species for this type of button like condition in sweetened condensed milk. Here briefly we will discuss about the spoilage of UHT milk. I have fully discussed about the processing of UHT milk in a separate lecture. <clears throat> there I have mentioned it has it has undergone a very high temperature and under aseptic packaging so there will be no pathogens and bacteria in the environment in the packaging material or in the milk it is sterilized milk but however there can be some kind of deterioration particularly in this diagram you can see when the, when the milk is in cold storage there is a perfect balance of casein micelles along with that we can see that green color that is the heat labile peptidase and red color there is heat stable peptidase. Now when there is a heat processing like sterilization, most of this heat labile peptidase will be inactivated but some of the heats, heat stable peptidase will survive the heating and that can cause proteolysis especially the case in micelles and they get partial hydrolysis and further 
at further stages this case in micelle started aggregation aggregation and in the last phase we can see that there is a kind of gel formation or sediment formation due to the hydrolysis of case in micelles so this kind of condition can happen in case of uhd milk now we will discuss about the frozen desserts especially ice cream they include frozen desserts include ice cream plus other frozen custards sorbets and ices the desserts are not ordinarily subject to spoilage as long as they are kept frozen so mostly they are kept at minus 20 degrees celsius so rarely there will be any changes unless there is any defect in the storage system otherwise it can stay 3 to 6 months without any problem so spoilage only may take place in the ingredients before they are mixed or in the mix before it is frozen so before freezing or before use many ingredients may have some kind of deterioration that can cause some spoilage effect in the ice cream so no spoilage problem should result unless it is held at temperature above freezing point for a considerable time when souring by acid forming bacteria can take place in case of ice cream now spoilage and defects about the fermented dairy products like yogurt and other kind of acidophilus milk even cheese also fermented dairy product but that we have discussed thoroughly so mostly about curd yogurt acidophilus milk kefir kumis all these are fermented dairy products which we have discussed earlier all of these products should be kept under refrigeration and they have limited shelf life so most of these are in acidic condition so they are partially is safe but there are many acid tolerant bacteria and yeast which can grow after some time so all these products has has a very specific shelf life in refrigerator in case of yogurt maybe up to 5 to 7 days after that there can be growth of acid tolerant bacteria or yeasts or molds and that can get spoiled or sometime there could be over fermentation and very high acid production is possible so they have to be taken care of and as per their shelf life it has to be utilized so now most of the dairy products i have discussed about their spoilage except a few remaining like one about the khoa khoa is a dehydrated dairy product which is prepared by continuous dehydration but still it will have around up to 10% moisture so it can also undergo spoilage though it has undergone long heat treatment so it is good if we keep it at refrigeration in that case up to 3 weeks 4 weeks can it can be stored beyond which there will be possibility for growth of different spoilage bacteria that is the cyclotropic bacteria or sometime yeast and mold because there is no preservative added or no sugar added but once it is converted with sweets added sugar that may give some better shelf life similarly other dairy products also we have to store it in a proper place and use it within the maximum shelf life period like about the dairy powders so we have discussed about the milk powders they are totally dried so hardly 2 to 5% moisture will be there and they are very specially packed so they can be stored up to 5 months 6 months or even 1 year depending on different conditions so the spoilage is very rare in those products except the oxidation is a issue so now we are at the end of today's lecture we have discussed today thoroughly about the spoilage of dairy products earlier in a lecture we have discussed about the spoilage of milk which was liked by many people and they have specially requested about the second part that is the spoilage of dairy products so i am sorry for the delay so here we have discussed about the spoilage some of the basic background the cause and the mechanism the chemistry and then we have discussed about the spoilage of cream butter cheese little bit details and we have discussed briefly about the evaporated milk sweet and condensed milk and ice cream fermented milk products and other milk products thank you hope it will be useful to you thank you